haven't met yet, my name is Chad. I'm one of the teaching pastors here at Good News. And if uh, uh, if we haven't met yet, I want to tell you just a little bit about myself. I'm not actually, uh, this isn't my day job, so to speak. I'm uh, I'm actually a journeyman lineman. I, work, I contract for Excel. I do the high voltage work for Excel. I replace cables and the overhead lines and all that kind of stuff. I, uh, I've been doing that for 17 years, actually. And over the course of 17 years, I've, I've been on all kinds of different crews. I've met, on, I've met all kinds of different people. And I, I tell you what, there are some colorful people in the construction industry. There truly are. I mean, there are some colorful people in the construction industry. And, and, and I mean, at one point, at one point, I'm running a crew, and I've got two guys that are on my crew. And, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a Christian pastor, and then I've got, uh, uh, I've got one guy. He's a hardcore Jehovah's Witness. I mean, suit and tie, knocking on doors on the weekends, handing out watchtowers, Jehovah's Witness. And then the other guy that's on my crew, he's a, he's a, he's a Mormon. Okay, and and I mean went on his two-year missions in uh, uh, in Chicago, and I get I mean he lived off of uh, fortune cookies because apparently uh, most uh, Chinese food restaurants, if the fortune cookies break, then they'll sell you like a whole bag of them for like a dollar, and so you know they don't have a lot of money, and so he would literally I mean he lived off of fortune cookies when he was on his uh, missions trips, and so and so I mean it's literally like a bad joke, right? I mean you got a Christian pastor, a Jehovah's Witness, and a Mormon missionary, and they're all in the same construction crew together, right? I mean, we, to say the least, we had some amazing conversations. I mean, it was, it, it was fun. It was fun. It was, it was honestly fun. But, um, but I mean, I, there's, I, I mean I've, I've had people on my crew that truly, I mean, they are true friends. I mean, I, I've met them. I've got to know them. I mean, over the years. And, and, and I, count, I count them as true friends that, that I've met over the years. And on the flip side of that, I have been on crews uh, working with people that just make me absolutely miserable. I mean, I mean, I, I know that there's other people out there that just dread going to work, not because the job is horrible, but because the people that you work with are horrible, right? And you're just like, oh, I cannot believe it's Sunday morning and I've already got to go to, go to work tomorrow. I've got to deal with that person again, right? I mean, it's, uh, it, it really is. Our relationships are everywhere. But uh, I've actually got a couple of apprentices right now. They're uh, and, and they're a crack up. I mean, they, they're they're constantly making my laugh. Uh, one one dude in particular, he's he's always just got this real just. Not like a serious face, but just a straight face all the time. And it doesn't matter what he's talking about. He can talk, be talking about something, all, I mean, just crazy goofball-y. I mean, just off the wall. And he's talking to you just with this straight face. And he actually came up to me the other day and just, you know, completely straight-faced, walked right up to me and said, do you suppose that when the movie Godzilla came out, God was like, dang, that's a good movie. And then, or dad, that's a good name, you know. And, and, and then just walks off. And I was like, <laughs> He probably did, you know, that, that's a pretty cool name. But, uh, but I mean, it, it really is. I mean, every day we encounter all these different people. We encounter all kinds of different people, and, and, and we have to deal with these people on a daily basis. And sometimes these relationships that we have, they're, they're pleasant. They're beneficial. They're, they're inspiring. They're fascinating, these relationships. And some of them, they, they make us miserable, right? Some of these relationships, they're irritating. Some of them are even intimidating, right? And the fact is, a lot of the problems that we have in life are because of these personality conflicts. Because of these personality conflicts, I mean, when your relationships are bad, life just stinks, right? I mean, when, when you've got bad relationships, whether bad relationships at work, you can have a great job that you enjoy and you've got these bad relationships there and it destroys the job or at home. You know, I mean, your, your relationship with your spouse, when you're fighting, you dread going home. I mean, you could have a great house, a great family, but, but if there's conflict in these relationships, then it, then it really does, it, it messes things up, it makes us miserable. And so it's very important that we learn how to get along with people, right? I mean, it really is. And, and today, we're continuing our series in James. We're continuing the series in James, the book of James. And this is, this is honestly one of my favorite books of the Bible because it's, it's just chock full of wisdom. And, and it's the kind of wisdom, I mean, James doesn't hold back. I mean, he kind of takes you and he smacks you upside the head with his wisdom, right? And it's, and, it's, and it's kind of in your face. I love the book of James. And today, we're going to be looking at James chapter 3, verses 13 through uh, 18. And so uh, you can go online, uh, go to uversion.com if you've got a tablet or smartphone. You can uh, download the Bible app and go to James chapter 3. Or uh, There's uh, Bibles in the seat backs in front of you. If you want to turn to James chapter 3, uh, verses 13 through 18, we're going to be looking at how to relate wisely to others, how to have wise relationships, and, and how to be wise in those relationships. And we're going to be in James chapter 3, starting in verse 13. And this is what James says. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. 
But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the, or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For, you, uh, for where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. And that verse 18 right there, that's, that's kind of the key verse. That's kind of, that's kind of the take-home verse, is that peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. James says every day in every relationship, we're sowing these seeds. We're sowing these seeds in these relationships that we have, and sometimes they're seeds of anger. Sometimes, you know, we, we go to work, and we, we've got irritating, angry people that we deal with, and, we, and we're angry right back, and we're irritating right back, and we're sowing these seeds of anger. And sometimes it's, it's, uh, it, we're sowing seeds of, of peace, of strength, of hope, of comedy, of patience, you know, and, and some of them are jealousy and insecurity or irritation. I mean, we sow all these seeds, and the different kinds of seeds that we sow are going to reap a harvest. I mean, if we're sowing seeds of hate, we're going to reap a harvest of hate. If we're sowing seeds of love, we're going to reap a harvest of love. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. So how do we, how do we sow these seeds of peace? How do we sow these seeds of wisdom? And, and how can I be a peacemaker? How can I have re, uh, peaceful relationships? And James says the answer is wisdom. The answer is wisdom, that, that we need to be wise in our relationships. So often we treat people in ways that, uh, that are, you know, the, these, these relationships that are irritating us. We treat, them and we treat these people mean and harsh. And, 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 and we, we, we say things like, she knew I was mad. She, I mean, by the time we were done, she knew I was mad. Right? I, sure did, I, I taught him a lesson. I, I, I taught him a lesson. He, he, knows, he knows not to mess with me anymore. I, I really let her have it. He's going to think twice before, he, uh, before crossing me again, right? And then after we put them in their place, we figure, they'll straighten up. That's not going to happen again. You know, uh, you know I mean, it, it doesn't make sense, right? I mean, it's not the way it wants. It, when we plant these seeds of anger, and then we want peace to grow out of the relationship, right? But that's not how it works. I mean, there, there's no wisdom in that thought process. I mean, the first thing that James says here is, is uh, in, in, uh, that wisdom is a lifestyle. That wisdom is a lifestyle. It's not something we know. In James uh, verse 13, he says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. It has nothing to do with our intelligence. It has nothing to do with the things that we've learned. It has everything to do with your relationships and your character in them. I mean, if James, if James was to, hear, to come here and say, okay, I want to see the hands of everybody, uh, of, of the wise people in the room. Can I, see the, can I see the hands? And if you're dumb enough to raise your hand, okay, if, if you're dumb enough to raise your hand, then, then James is going to say, show it. Prove it. I want to see it. Show it to me. Because you can't just talk about being wise. It's, I need to see it. Show me your wisdom by your lifestyle. It's not a matter of what you say with your lips, but it's a matter of how you live your life. It's, it's not a matter of your words, but it's a matter of your works. Right? It's, it's, it's your disposition that really shows how wise you are. How you get along with other people in these relationships. That shows how wise you really are. It's a lifestyle. We live out. We live out our wisdom. Wisdom has more to do with our character and our relationships than it has to do with education and intelligence. You see, wisdom creates humility. Looking, looking at that at the end of that verse, uh, in the humility that comes from wisdom. Wisdom creates humility. Intelligence, so often, uh, knowledge, I'm sorry, knowledge causes pride. Wisdom causes humility. The second thing that James says is lack of wisdom causes problems. And it causes all kinds of problems. I mean, I, we look, at, look at verses 14 through 16. I mean, this is, the, these are, this is pretty intense language here. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven but it is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and every evil practice. When you're not, when you're not living by God's wisdom, when you're living by this earthly wisdom, I mean, you, you see these words like disorder, every evil practice. I mean, problems and chaos and confusion. I mean, it's, I mean, demonic, unspiritual. I mean, these are strong words. I mean, this is, I mean, these are, these are, these are big words that he's looking at here. And when we look at our lives... When we look at our lives, where are the problem areas? 
where are the areas in our lives, where are the, where are the areas in your life where you look at it and say, that, that area stresses me out. This, this is something that's a problem in my life. And yeah, I know we've got financial issues. I know some of us have health issues. But I'd be willing to bet 80 to 90% of the issues that stress us out revolve around with these relationships in our lives. Whether it's in our family, our spouse, our kids, maybe our parents, or, or at work, you know, you've got that boss, or, or you've got a coworker, or an employee, or whatever it is, and they're just grinding at you, irritating these relationships. Or, you're, or you've got that neighbor that, that lets their dog out, and it just won't shut up. It just barks all the time, and you've got this relationship with this guy next door, or the guy that mows his lawn at midnight, I don't know, or, 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 or at school. You know, you've, you've got a bully. You've got somebody that like, gloms on to you. I, I don't know what it is, or, or maybe it's here at church. Maybe it's people here at church. I don't know. But, but I mean, the, the reality is that relationships would be so much easier if you didn't have to deal with other people. Right? I mean, I mean they, uh, relationships would be so easy if other humans weren't involved. But, but the lack of wisdom in these relationships causes all kinds of problems. All kinds of problems. So what do we do? What do we do with these irritating people? What do we do with these, with these broken relationships that, that we have to go to time and time again? How do we do this? Well, in verse 17... James, li James lists out these characters, characteristics of wise people. In verse 17, he lists out these characteristics. And, and, and what I want to do uh, is, is I want to read uh, James chapter 3, verse 17. What I want to do is uh, I want to be able to tear it apart and look at it a little bit. But verse 17, James says this. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. I mean, that's a pretty good list, right? I, that, that's a pretty good list. And like I want to say, I, I want to be able to dive into that verse and kind of pick it apart and tear it apart. And I'm, I've got six different characteristics that, that wise people have in relationships, okay? And this is going to be how we relate wisely to others. And now as we go through these six characteristics, there's, there's hopefully going to be one or two that really jump out at you and smack you in the head. Okay, and, and when you get smacked in the head, what I want you to do is I want you to circle that one or put a star next to it or put an arrow or whatever it is. Make a mark next to that one because if you're, well, if you're anything like me, then you're going to have stars and underlines on, on, on all of them. But, um, but really, uh, what I want uh, to be able to do is give you one or two things to do. Okay, one or two things to work on because if we try to grab onto all of these, then, I mean, it's going to be too much too quick. I mean, you've got to figure out which, what are the two that are one or two that really jump out at you, and those are the ones that God's going to start wanting you to work on. But let's, uh, let's just focus on one or two. But the first one is that if I'm wise, I won't compromise my integrity. If I'm wise, I won't compromise my integrity. I mean, uh, the wisdom that comes in the beginning of verse 17, uh, the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure. First of all, pure. And that pure, that means uncorrupted. It means authentic. It means genuine. And in 1 John chapter 3, verse 3, this is the exact same word that is used to describe Jesus' character. That kind of purity. That kind of genuine. That kind of uncorrupted character. I mean, it's God's character, really. I mean, Jesus is God. I mean, this is God's character. That word pure is literally God's character. It's integrity. If I'm genuine, if I'm genuine, if I'm wise, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to try to cheat you. I'm not going to try to manipulate you. I'm not going to be deceitful. I'm going to be a person of integrity. You know, I, and, and these relation, relationships all over, it doesn't matter whether who it's with, relationships really do. I mean, they're based on trust. I mean, if you don't have honesty, who's going to trust you? If you, don't have, if you don't have honesty, who's going who's gonna to respect you? I mean, it's, it really is. I mean, this is the basis of relationships, and that's why, it's, that's why he says it's first of all pure. That's, that, that's the base of it. It's first of all pure. Dr. Leonard Keeler, uh, the man who invented the lie detector, he tested 25,000 people after he invented the lie detector, and he came to one basic conclusion, that basically humans are a bunch of dirty, dirty liars. You know, and, and I don't know why he needed a lie detector to tell you. I could have told him that for like 25 bucks. But, but he, d he decided he was going to figure this out, and that was, his, that was his conclusion. People are basically a bunch of dirty, dirty liars, and, there's, and, and it really is. I mean, you've got to have this wisdom. You've got to have this integrity, and that it truly is the basis of wise uh, wise relationships. In the Bible, there's really two books in the Bible that are really wisdom-based, and James is one of them, and the other one is Proverbs, and so I wanted to pull from the Old Testament Proverbs, I wanted to pull this wisdom, and from James, I wanted to pull this wisdom, and so I've got, I've got a, a couple verses in Proverbs for each one of these, and in this one, uh, Proverbs verse, uh, ten, chapter 10, verse 9 says, whoever walks in integrity walks securely. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely. The wisdom, com wisdom that comes from heaven is, first of all, pure. 
He's not afraid of being found out because he doesn't say one thing to one group and a different thing to another group. I mean, there's, there's no man that has a good enough memory to be a habitual liar. Eventually, you're going to slip up. Eventually, you're going to get caught. And if you've got integrity, you've got confidence. You've got confidence in your relationships because, because you know you can walk securely because I know I told them the truth and I told them the truth. I don't have to try to figure out what lie did I tell them, which is different from the lie that I told them, right? If I'm wise, I will not compromise my integrity. If that's one that jumped out at you, then, you know, circle it, underline, arrow, heart, star, whatever you do, but, but, but mark it, mark it on there. The second one, number two, if I'm wise, I will not antagonize your anger. And continuing in verse 17, wisdom is peace-loving. The wisdom that comes from heaven is peace-loving. I'm not going to make you angry. Wise people, uh, wise people work on maintaining that harmony, maintaining that thing. They're not always looking for a fight. I mean, everybody, everybody I'm sure, has that person. They, they, they know a person in their life that just knows how to push buttons, right? And, you've, and, and every single one of us, I've got buttons. Carol's got buttons. My wife's got buttons. I mean, my kids have buttons. Everybody's got buttons. And, and, and you've got those people in your lives, and they know those buttons to push, right? And they know exactly what makes you angry, and they use it to disrupt conversa- conversation. They use it to cause conflict. It's they, they get enjoyment almost out of, out of starting these fights and just and winning the argument. And if you're wise, you won't antagonize people's anger. In Proverbs chapter 20, verse 3, it says, It is to one's honor to avoid strife. But every fool is quick to quarrel. If you're wise, you're going to avoid purposefully starting these fights. And I, I actually can. I can actually be pretty good at this. And after 15 years of marriage, I, I, know, that there's, I know that there's things that I can hold my tongue. You know, or I should hold my tongue. But I, I, I know exactly. I mean, give me two sentences, and I'm sleeping on the couch. I can guarantee it. You know, I mean, I, 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 could, I, could, I could make that happen. Two sentences, it's done. Or, or the guys that I work with. I've worked with them long enough. I know, I know, I know what they're doing. I, I, I know how, how I could just start a fight or how I, even I could win the fight. It's really not that hard. I mean, you take the things that people love, the tape, things that people are excited about or they care about and, you, and that they work hard on, and you just start stabbing. Anybody can do it. Anybody can start a fight. But what's hard is not doing it. <laughs> That's what's hard. Having that perfect thing that you could say that you know uh, in, that, in the heat of that conversation is going to cause that pain, is going to cause that hurt, is going to disrupt the conversation, and you're going to win the fight. Having that perfect thing and not saying it. Some things aren't just wor- not worth the fight. Wisdom is peace-loving. I'm not going to antagonize your anger. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 29, it says, Whoever is patient has great understanding, but one who is quick-tempered displays folly. We start to get angry in these conversations with these irritating people or whatever it is, and we start, and then we instantly start saying these stupid, hurtful things, right? I mean, how many of us have been in the heat of a conversation, and you just start saying something, and then even as you're saying it, you're like, oh, no, words are coming out, you know, and you're trying to, you're trying to get them back because you know that as soon as it comes out, it's going to cause damage. It's not going to fix anything. It's not going to, it's not going to benefit anybody, and, and you instantly feel regret. You instantly feel remorse about saying it. You, you, this, this anger, when we, got cut, when we get caught up in this anger, it displays folly. It causes mistakes. And if I'm wise in relationships, I'm not going to antagonize your anger. If that's, if that's jumping out at you, put a star next to it, underline it, whatever. So if, I, if I'm wise in relationships, I'm not going to compromise my integrity, and I'm not going to antagonize your anger. And number three, I won't minimize your feelings. I won't minimize your feelings. Wisdom that comes from heaven is considerate. Wisdom that comes from heaven is considerate. And that word considerate means mindful of the feelings of others. I'm, gonna, if, I'm not going to minimize your feelings. If I'm wise in relationships, I'm going to be mindful of the feelings of the people around me. There's a common mistake, and, and, and this happens to me all the time. But if there's a common mistake that if, if I don't feel the way you do about a situation, I might be in the exact same situation, but, but, but you feel one way and I feel something different, well, you must be wrong. You must, be, you must be invalid, or, or, or those feelings are illo- illogical or, or irre- irrelevant, you know? I mean, we say things like, like you're, o- you're, you're just overreacting, right? You're just overreacting. You know, th- that shouldn't bother you like that. It shouldn't, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't let those people or those situations get to you like that. You know, if, uh, if I was in that situation, I wouldn't be feeling that. I can't believe you let that person or situation get to you in that way, or, 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 or the flip side. You don't care. You don't care because you don't, you're, not, you're not feeling the same things I do. You know, if you did care, you would feel like this. Or, or if I were you, I'd be so mad at that. I'd be angry in that situation. 
You know, I mean, and we say these things, and if your feelings don't match my feelings in this situation, then you must be wrong, right? In Proverbs chapter 15, verse 4, the Old Testament, it says, The soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. If I'm wise in relationships, I'm not going to minimize your feelings. I'm going to be, I'm going to be considerate. I'm, I mean, I, I'm, I'm that, that, that soothing tongue is, is saying, you know what, I, I understand you're feeling that way. I might not feel that way, but I understand you're feeling that way. And, 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 it's, and it's there. It's not saying your feelings are wrong. The way you're feeling, I mean, it's, that's their reality. They're, they're, they're feeling that way because that's their reality. I mean, you can't argue with that. I don't know if you've ever played this game, but, uh, you know, my day can beat your day. Right? Have you ever played that game where, where the one spouse comes home and says, oh, traffic was horrible, I had such a horrible day, my boss was yelling at me, everything didn't go right, blah, 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 and then the other spouse says, well, you should hear, listen, listen to my day, I mean, Jimmy dunked the cat in the toilet and, and then lit the carpet on fire, and, and I didn't go to the meeting because I, I, you know, the car wouldn't start or I had a flat tire, and well, my day was worse because I was, you know, doing this, and, and it's just back and forth. The fact is, you both had a bad day. <laughs> You know, I mean, we need to be able to, wisdom is considerate. Allow your spouse to be tired without having to say, I'm more tired than you are. Be considerate and mindful to their feelings. The fact is, you're both tired. And if, and if, you're, and if you're wise, you'll be considerate and mindful of other people's feelings. They're allowed to be tired, you're allowed to be tired. They're allowed to be upset in a situation, and you're allowed to not be, or whatever the situation is. But we, if we're going to be wise in our relationships, we can't be minimizing the other person's feelings. Underline it, circle it, star it. If a wise person, I mean, a wise person won't compromise integrity, won't antagonize your anger, won't minimize your feelings. And number four is, if I'm wise, I won't criticize your decisions. I won't criticize your suggestions. The word submissive in our culture, and, and, and this, is, this is really sticky because the word submissive in our culture is really a bad word nowadays, right? I mean, if you're submissive, that means people are walking all over you. If you're submissive, then you're that, you know, you're that, you're that husband or you're that wife to the husband that is domineering and, and overbearing. I mean, if you're submissive, then, then you're weak, and, and it's related to that. But, but really, the American culture, have dis they, they've destroyed the word submissive. That's not what it means, and especially in this. It means willing to listen, willing to reason. Uh, I actually looked up this verse in several different translations of the Bible. There's a bunch of different translations of the Bible. And I looked it up in several. In the Revised Standard Version, it says, it's open to reason. In the, in the Living Bible, it says, it allows discussion. In, 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 the, in the Amplified Version, that's actually my favorite version of the Bible. I love reading out of the Amplified. I do 80 to 90% of my reading out of the Amplified Version of the Bible. And it says, it says uh, in the Amplified Bible, it is willing to yield to reason. Willing to yield to reason. And, 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 so, and so really that word submissive doesn't mean that you're getting walked on. It means are you willing to, are you reasonable? Are you a reasonable person? Can, 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 can your kids come and reason with you? Can your spouse come and reason with you? Or, if you're, or, if, or, or are you the type of person that is, you know, if I want your opinion, I'd give it to you. Right? I mean, if, if I wanted to hear your opinion, I'd give it to you. Or, or I don't bother me with the facts of this situation. I've made up my mind and this is what we're going to do. Right? I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's an instance where this... Our natural reaction when somebody starts making these suggestions, starts, uh, starts putting input into our lives, our natural reaction has become defensive. What, I didn't do it right? I didn't, I, didn't, I, did, I, didn't, I didn't do that right? It's not good enough for you? Is that what it is? And, and, and we want to make, make suggestions, but all of a sudden that person's coming at us like, well, I, they're taking it like a personal criticism. A wise person can learn from anybody. It doesn't have to go straight to that defensive, that criticism like you're attacking me. That's, that, that's not what it's about. A wise person can learn from anybody. In Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15, it says, The way of a fool seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. The wise listen to advice. If you're wise, you'll be open to discussions. You'll be open to suggestions. You don't criticize. You don't get defensive. One of the hardest things that Matthew has, uh, has taught me, Pastor Matthew, the lead pastor here at Good News, and it, you know when we get that, that, that harsh email, when we get from, from the congregation or we get that connection card with, uh, you know, with whatever it is on there that is, that is stabbing, that is, that is criticizing, that is, that is harsh, whatever it is, the first thing he says you know, is, is take a step back, remove your feelings from the situation and look at it with honesty. Really look at the situation. No matter, no matter what words they use, if it is meant to really stab on you or whatever it is, take yourself out emotionally from this criticism. Don't take it as a personal attack. Read it and find the truths in, in, in their complaint. 
we didn't find the truths in their complaint. Find the truth, grab a hold of it, change, learn from it. And the things that are false and, and stabbing and angry, just, just ignore them, throw them away, get rid of it. But try to find those truths because 90% of the time when, when somebody's being critical, when somebody's making those suggestions, there's truth in that. And it's, it's so hard to do that. But if I'm wise, I'm going to be able to listen to suggestions. I'm not going to criticize the suggestions. I'm going to listen to them. I'm going to find the truths and I'm going to change if I need to. If I'm wise, I won't criticize the decisions. I won't criticize the suggestions. If that's you, then circle it, underline it. Uh, number five, if I'm wise, I won't emphasize your mistakes. I'm not going to emphasize your mistakes. Wisdom that comes from heaven is full of mercy and of good fruit. Wisdom that comes from heaven is full of mercy and good fruit. I mean, it, do you jump on every single mistake that somebody makes? Do you jump on them? Do you, do you grab a hold of them? Do you shake them? Do you, I mean, do you lash out at every fault that you find? I mean, do you, do you, do you, or do you ever just let people go? Do you just let people go, or, or, or do you hound them over every single mistake? The definition of grace and the gr definition of, uh, of mercy is compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to harm or punish. So someone did something wrong. Somebody did something wrong to you, and you have every right to punish him. You have every right to hammer on him. You have every right to do that. But instead, grace and compassion and forgiveness are put in the place of punishment and harm. Grace and compassion and forgiveness are put in the place of that punishment and harm. If I'm wise, I'm not going to emphasize your mistake. I'm going to be full of mercy. I'm going to be full of grace. I'll give you what you need, not what you deserve, right? You need that grace. You need that forgiveness. You don't need to be punished. Now, there may, be, there, there may need to have to have a conversation happen. I mean, if you've crossed over a line with me and there's been uh, damages made, then you know what? I can, we probably need to have a conversation. We probably need to hash this out. But it's a conversation. I mean, there's, there's two different conversations. Either there's a conversation that's had with grace and forgiveness and compassion, or there's a conversation that's made without all that. And those are two separate conversations about the same topic, right? I mean, these, th this can really go two different ways. Either it's going to be with grace and mercy or it's going to be without. A wise person doesn't emphasize your mistakes. In Proverbs chapter 17, verse 9, whoever would foster love covers an offense, but whoever repeats the matter separates close friends. Love forgets mistakes. Are the people around you allowed not to be perfect? Are, are, are they allowed to be imperfect around you, or is it, are you hammering on them every time? Or if someone messes up, or are they going to hear about it every time? The reality is that when somebody stumbles, when somebody stumbles and jacks something up, they don't need judgment. What we need is encouragement. We need encouragement when we stumble. The wise thing is not to emphasize the mistake in these relationships. The wise thing is to encourage, to show that mercy, to show that grace, to show that forgiveness. And people who have these wise relationships, they don't emphasize mistakes. James says, if I'm wise, I won't emph emphasize your mistakes. I won't criticize your suggestions. I won't minimize your feelings. I won't antagonize your anger. And I won't compromise my integrity. And the last one, number six, if I'm wise, I won't disguise my own weakness. If I'm wise, I won't disguise my own weakness. Wisdom is impartial and sincere. The wisdom that comes from heaven is impartial and sincere. I mean, it's, it's, it's without hypocrisy. In the Greek theater... <coughs> And this was actually really cool. As I was doing my study this week, I, I, found, I, I come across this. In the Greek theater, there would be, there would be often only like two or three actors that, that, that would be in a play. And, and each actor would have several different masks. And they would come out and they would be this person. They would act as this person. And then they would come out with a different mask and they would act as that person. They'd go back and they'd come out with a different mask. There's only three people. But they would put on an entire play and they would play these different people. The actors that put on these different masks were actually the, their name. They were a hypocrite. That's where we get the name hypocrite. I, I come out, and I'm holding this mask up, and I'm acting this way. And then I go back, and I come back out, and I, I'm holding up a different mask, and I'm acting a different way. That's where we get the word hypocrite. I thought that was really interesting. But, uh, but they have all kinds of masks. And James says if you're smart, if you're wise, and you're not going to be a phony. You're not going to be a phony. You, you're not going to be wearing masks and trying to be something that you're not. I mean, this is, this is honestly one reason why I love good news is because is because this is a place for real people with real sins, with real hang-ups, with, with real faults, with real emotional problems, and real family problems. If you're perfect, this isn't the place for you. 
I'm sorry. Maybe there's a church out for the perfect, but, but this isn't the, the church for the perfect people. It really is not. And I've always tried, as I've been up here, and I've been preaching for several years uh, to this congregation, I've always tried to be as transparent as I can. I've always tried to be as honest as I can. I've, 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 I've been up here, and, and, and there's been times where my honesty and my transparency has honestly been very embarrassing. And I've never felt judged. And so thank you for, for, for allowing me to be honest and, and not having that judgment. But, but wise people are honest. They're open. They're not a phony. They're genuine. They're real. They're authentic. What you see is what you get with a wise person in relationships. What you see is what you get. I'm not trying to be something that I'm not. I'm not trying to pretend. I'm not trying to be perfect. And if I'm wise, I'm not going to disguise my weaknesses. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper. You hide from it, you're not going to get any better. But the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. The one that confesses and renounces those sins finds mercy. If I'm wise, I'm not going to disguise my weaknesses. People appreciate honesty. And the more I am honest, the more people feel like they can be honest with me. I'm an open book. I'm honest. I'm genuine. And the more I'm like that, the more people can come to me. And, and they feel like they can be honest and genuine as well. And the reality is a lot of people struggle with the same stuff that I'm struggling with. And, and the people in your life are probably same, struggling with the same stuff you're struggling with. And if we're honest in those relationships, and we're not trying to hide behind these masks, then it opens up and it fosters this, uh, this, this two-way road where honesty and integrity can, can flourish. If I'm wise, I won't disguise my own weakness. And so we've, we've got these six different characteristics of wise people. We've got these six different characteristics. And hopefully by now, hopefully you haven't starred and circled all six of them like I did. But, but hopefully you've got maybe one or two, right? You've got one or two that, that kind of jumped out at you and smacked you upside the head. And, 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 and what I want to do is I, I want to be able to pick those two and start working on them. I and mean, we need... Every single one of us, I can guarantee, needs more wisdom in the relationships that we have. Every single one of us, I know, can, can, can benefit from this. And James was very clear, where do we get wisdom? Where do we get the wisdom? I mean, because, because even in that very first verse, in verse 13, it says, wisdom that comes from heaven, right? In, in, in chapter 1, verse 5, James said, and, and, and if you miss that sermon, it's online. You can go back and look at it. But in, uh, James is very clear where wisdom comes from. In chapter 1, verse 5, he says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. This wisdom comes from God. It's got to come from God. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should get it from him. Wisdom starts when we start to follow Jesus. This true wisdom comes from him alone. See, see I, just, I just gave you knowledge. Right? I just gave you knowledge. I, 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 I taught you about what it means to have wisdom in relationships. But we, if it's just knowledge that we're seeking, if we're just knowledge that we're operating on, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to fail. It's going to lead to that pride like we talked about earlier, right at the beginning. That knowledge and that wisdom, that, that, or that knowledge leads to pride. Wisdom leads to humility. We need to get this wisdom from, from God, from Jesus. I taught you what it means to be wise. Now you've got to go to God to get the wisdom. And so step one is to follow Jesus. You've got to be following Jesus. If you want Jesus to give you his wisdom, you have to be following him. You need to be a Jesus follower before Jesus is going to give you this wisdom. And then you ask God who generously gives that wisdom. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 3, he says, uh, Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. It all starts with the relationship with Jesus. And, and if you've been a Jesus follower for years and years and years, then start following him in these relationships. Start acting like Jesus in these relationships. Ask God to give you the wisdom when it comes to that irritating person at work, when it comes to the, your kids or, or your parents or, or, or your neighbor with the barking dog or, or whatever it is, whatever relationships that you have, ask God for that wisdom and start following God in those relationships. And if you're not a Jesus follower, then that's step one. If, if you're not following God, if you're not, if you're not following Jesus, then, then, then what's holding you back? What, what's, what's holding you back from this wisdom? What's holding you back from, from gaining this wisdom that only comes from God? Because reality is, is that as you follow God, as you follow Jesus in, in that life, God's going to develop this character. God's going to develop these characters within you. And as you're, as you're praying God and asking God for that wisdom, as, as, as you're trying to walk with integrity or, or not emphasize their, other people's mistakes or whatever it is that you start and underlined, it's as you follow God that God will give you the wisdom in those. God works on you, and he's going to give you the wisdom that makes these relationships work. If you're not a Jesus follower, then all you got to do is ask. All you got to do is tell God, hey, God, 
I need to follow you. I can't do it on my own. When I try to work my own relationships, I'm jacking it up. And a little in, in a minute, I'm going to pray, and, I, and, and I'll give you a prayer that you can, you can kind of pray to God. You can have that conversation with God right now and start asking for that wisdom. But let's pray. Oh, Father God, I, I, I praise you and I thank you for, for good news, for this place that I know that I can be up here. I can be honest and sincere, and I can do that without being judged, without being uh, looked down upon. And I just thank you for this congregation, God. I thank you so much for the opportunities that you've given me here to speak to this congregation. And I pray, Lord, I know I've got relationships all over the place, and, and some of them wink. Some, some of them, like I said, they're really good friends, and others I just kind of shake my head at, and I get irritated, and I get angry, God. And I just... I need your wisdom in these relationships. God, I want to be following you in these relationships. God, I want to be able to uh, seek your wisdom out. God, I pray for your wisdom in me as I walk in these relationships with other people, God. And I pray if, uh, uh, for this congregation, if you're here this morning and you're looking at the relationships that you have and you say, wow, I've, I, got, I got this one that's hitting me. I got that one that's hitting me. I, you know, I... God, I pray for the wisdom in the lives of this congregation as well. If, if, and, and God, I pray that we are able to follow you. And if you're, if you're here this morning and you're not a Jesus follower and, and, and you want that wisdom, you want to be able to have that wisdom and, and to be able to live wisely in these relationships, then ask God, tell him right now that, say, God, I, I've tried to have these relationships on my own and I've messed it up. I've tried, to, I've tried to operate out of, out of, out of my own intelligence and out of, out of what I've learned, but, but it's just led to pride. It's just led to, it's led to disaster. It's led to that chaos. It's led to every evil practice, as it said in, in, in verse 16. But God, I want your wisdom. I want to follow you. I believe you lived and you died on the cross. And you did that for me to pay for my sins. And God, I choose to follow you. I choose to let you lead in my life. And if you prayed that prayer, then God's going to show up mighty. If you prayed that prayer, then, then, then I, I would really encourage you to let me know. Tell, tell me that you prayed that prayer so, I can, uh, so we can get you some resources and I can point you in a, in a good direction and, and, and whatnot. But, but God, I praise you and I thank you for, that those, for those of us here that are willing to follow you, that want to follow you, that want to have wisdom in relationships. God, and I pray that you show up in mighty ways this week as we, as we work on the, on the one or two things, God, that you would work through us as we change in our relationships, as we train, change in the way that we relate to other people, God, that you would work through us, that you would change us, God, because that's where wisdom comes from. It comes from you. That wisdom comes from heaven, God, and I pray that you work it in us and that we would start seeing changes in the relationships that we have. God, we love you so much, and I thank you for this congregation. I thank you for this day, and I thank you for being willing to work through me, God. I love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.